So in this video, we're going to be looking at Bon Harbor cycles and how we can use that to calculate something called lattice enthalpy. Now, from a previous video, right, we mentioned lattice enthalpy already, but lattice enthalpy, just a reminder, it is the enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of an ionic compound from its gaseous ions under standard conditions. Now, if you were to look at an example of lattice enthalpy, right, let's take sodium chloride. We've got one mole of it and it's a solid, and we're going to form that from two things. That's going to be sodium ions that are going to be a gas, and then also we're going to form them from uh, chloride ions which is also going to be a gas as well now to do this in the laboratory to form exactly one mole of a solid ionic lattice it's actually pretty hard it's next to impossible and so instead what we can actually do is is we can create something called a Born Harbor energy cycle and we can work out lattice enthalpy indirectly using ideas of Hess's law and there's several bits of information that you need to do this right they include the data on the enthalpy of formation atomization ionization and the electron affinities as well right and together all together you can actually calculate a value for lattice enthalpy itself now let's look at an example in this question over here we're asked to use a born harbor cycle and the data provided to calculate a value for the lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride in this case as well and normally when you see these types of questions it's important to know what ions that you actually form because that tells you how many lots of each type of enthalpy that you'll actually need right normally in the exam right they could ask you to draw it from scratch or they could give you parts missing in this case to make it a bit more straightforward to conceptualize the ideas i've put parts missing itself right and you can see in this born harbor cycle we've got lattice enthalpy over here you've got a bunch of arrows and you're shown here that this arrow represents the lattice enthalpy which is the enthalpy change when you go from this sodium plus ion here that's a gas and this chloride ion here that's a gas to form sodium chloride the solid itself as well we can't calculate that but we can use the information given in the table over here right to calculate it indirectly itself as well so what we're saying is is that this enthalpy change is equal to all of this is enthalpy change itself and that's what we need to calculate root one to work out root two or root two to work out root one whichever way he gives it us right now just to bear some things in mind when we look at arrows the direction of the arrows are quite important when it comes to bone harbor cycles if let's say an arrow is going up it means that that process is endothermic if it's going down it means the process is exothermic just like lattice enthalpy is over here it's an exothermic process and so the arrow is going to point downwards remember if you go against the arrow you subtract and if you go along the arrow you add so it's a similar concept based on your Hesse cycles itself from year one the order we go in is formation atomization ionization electron affinity to get the lattice enthalpy and so let's say if i were to start off we'll start off over here we've got sodium chloride as a solid right we need to think about the first arrow which is going to be formation where we're looking at our elements in our standard states that actually make up one mole of sodium chloride and that's going to be sodium which is a solid and then it's also going to be half a molecule of chlorine because remember it needs to balance and we need to only have one mole of sodium chloride there as well so we'll say that that is our formation step done and this arrow represents the enthalpy change of formation itself right what about the next arrow well we need to atomize our two substances over here i'm going to start off with sodium right and then i'll do chlorine in a separate step to atomize it i need to form one mole of gaseous atoms so in that case sodium solid is going to turn to sodium gas right and i'm going to be left with chlorine untouched which is still a gas and it's still a diatomic molecule and then in the next step right i'm going to atomize the uh, chlorine itself so i'm going to have one mole of chlorine atoms in that case and i'm still going to have uh, sodium which is going to stay as a gas itself yeah so there's our enthalpy change of atomization done over here and i'm going to put it in brackets as well in terms of what's been atomized so in this case we've got atomization and it's going to be uh, sodium in this case we've got atomization again and it's going to be chlorine in this case right the next step is is we need to think okay we've done atomization the next part of fail is going to be ionization and so i need to ionize sodium to get sodium plus ions and so right i'm going to have the enthalpy change up symbol over here and then it's going to be ie and then the first ionization energy so in that case right i'm going to have sodium going to form sodium plus gaseous ions 
I'm going to put them electrons there as well because that's a product. And then I'm going to keep that chlorine just the way it is as individual atoms, one mole of those atoms itself. And you can see, right, that that chlorine itself is going to nab these electrons and it's going to form chloride ions. And that gives our next step as well, which is going to be the electron affinity, EA1 itself, the first electron affinity. And so that's those two steps done. And we're going to try and calculate lattice enthalpy now, right? Now, how do I actually go about calculating lattice enthalpy well i've colored it in to make it a bit more easier we're going to say this over here is going to be equal to this over here and if you were to imagine it like a journey you've got zero as your starting point so what you can say is is that your enthalpy change all right so the artist enthalpy in that case is going to be equal to and then we'll start off with zero and then if we go against the arrow like how we are over here right we're going to subtract so we're going to subtract the electron affinity uh, the first electron affinity and so i'm going to do subtract look at my data in the table which one's the first electron affinity well we can see it's going to be minus three six four itself so zero minus and then it's going to be minus three six four itself and then right i'm going against all these arrows here so i'm going to keep subtracting for the ionization energy and the enthalpy change of atomizations and i'm going to tick off my values so that i know i'm not reusing them again because it is very easy to make some human error here and you want to use the right metacognition to approach this question because it's easy marks it might look quite complicated, but it's actually not that bad. It's just a longer Hess's law cycle. So yeah, ionization energies, we're going to do that one next. So we're going to do minus 494. And then we're going to minus again, right? Because we're looking at the atomization of chlorine, which is going to be 121. We're going to minus again for the atomization of sodium, which is going to be 109. And then we're going to add this time because we are going along this arrow over here, the enthalpy change of formation, which is going to be minus 411 itself, right? I'll put that in my calculator and what I end up with is a value of minus 771 kilojoules per mole itself yeah and so there's my answer now another way that you can actually be challenged in this question is you could be asked to actually find a missing value and you would just write the equation out as normal but then you'd put the missing value as x and then rearrange to find that value for x and i want you to have a go at that in this task over here feel free to pause the video and then resume once you're ready to move on so yeah, in this case, right, we're trying to find the enthalpy change of atomization for chlorine itself. And I'm going to write out my equation as I would do normally. And I'm going to say this is zero, right? And I'm going to try and find the lattice enthalpy. And then I'm going to work my way around the arrows itself, right? So in that case, the lattice enthalpy is equal to minus 771 itself. And uh, we're going to say that is equal to, and then it's going to be zero because we're starting our journey. And then because we're going against the arrow here, we're going to subtract, 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 and then add. So it's going to be zero. And then we're going to minus, minus 364 itself. And then I'm going to minus 494 and then minus x because we can change this to x if we're trying to find that unknown that's what the examiners like to see and then we're going to minus 109 and then we're going to add because we're going along that arrow over here for the enthalpy change of formation minus 411 kilojoules per mole itself now the thing is normally you would just calculate a value for the lattice enthalpy but in this case i'm not going to i'm going to rearrange to find x by moving everything else to the other side um, or I could just move x to the other side and move the minus 771 to the other side and so what that actually should get me is is x being equal to and then it's going to be 121 kilojoules per mole itself yeah and that's how we can actually get an extra two marks let's say if they asked us to find a missing value itself and that applies to any Hess's law calculation especially bono level cycles as well so moving on, I've got a more challenging example here for you to try. I want you to find the lattice enthalpy of potassium oxide. But if you were to think about it, your bon harbor cycle is going to look a bit different. And the reason why is because, right, you're forming, think about what types of ions you're forming and how many lots, two lots of potassium ions, and then you're forming one lot of oxide ion, which is two minus itself. So think how many lots of atomization of potassium are you going to have? how many lots of ionization energies are you going to have and then how many lots 
of uh, electron affinities are you going to have as well right so the ionization energies and the uh, atomizations you can just time the number by two but you know the first and second electron affinities they're going to be slightly different where their values are pretty pretty different to be honest so yeah feel free to pause the video and have a go so yeah if you were to approach this question we've got potassium oxide over here and then we've got our enthalpy change of formation to begin with where i need to form one mole of potassium oxide from its elements in its standard states and to do that i need two lots of solid potassium and then i'm also going to need half a lot of oxygen that's a gas itself right now with that information i'm going to look at the atomization of potassium first and then oxygen so if i were to atomize and here's the hint you've got two potassiums so you're going to have to atomize two potassiums to form two uh, moles of potassium gas so in that case you end up with two lots of potassium gas and then your oxygen is going to stay the same for now right and then if I were to atomize my oxygen, right, I end up with one mole of oxygen atoms, which is a gas. And then remember, you've still got those two lots of potassium atoms that are going to be gases as well. So if that's the case, we've done formation, we've done atomization. What about ionization? Well, what are we going to ionize two moles of potassium gas atoms to? Well, we're going to form two moles of potassium plus ions that are also a gas two moles of electrons and then we're going to form our oxygen nothing really happens to that to be honest it just stays as it is because we've not dealt with that yet now we're going to use one of those lots of electrons right to do the first electron affinity of oxygen so what we actually end up with is O minus on its own which is a gas we've lost one lot of electrons so we're left with this and then we've got two lots of potassium ions which are going to be untouched as well they're a gas as well if that's the case right you're going to do the second electron affinity and notice how your electron affinity the first one's going to be exothermic the second one's going to be endothermic because remember if you've got a negative ion and you're trying to add a negative electron to it you need to add energy to overcome the repulsion between the two substances so in that case you're going to end up with now or two minus which is a gas and then you're going to end up with no electrons left over but then you're going to have two lots of potassium plus ions and if you were to look at that right that actually makes the lattice enthalpy so you know ionization electron affinity that's worked out okay how can we check if it's right look at the lattice enthalpy makes sense because what we've basically got is is two lots of potassium gas reacting with and then it's going to be one lot of oxide gas and that's going to form potassium oxide itself that's the equation for the lattice enthalpy so let's label our actual enthalpy values right you can write them down but it just creates more error so you might want to just write down the uh, symbols for them so that you know what number goes where so in this case right you've got the second electron affinity you've got the first electron affinity you've got the ionization energy but remember, you're going to have two lots of them because you're ionizing two moles. You've got the um, enthalpy change of atomization of oxygen. You've got the enthalpy change of atomization of potassium. But remember, that's going to be times by two because you've got two moles. And then you've got the enthalpy change of formation in this case for potassium oxide itself. So now that you've got your kind of diagram sorted, right, you know that this is going to be equal to all of this. And you've got to form an equation, taking into account the arrows, which direction you're going in and so on. So I'm going to start off by saying delta HLE is equal to, I'm going to start off with this being zero. I'm going to subtract a value for the electron affinity. I'm going to start off at zero again. I'm going to subtract a value for the electron affinity, the second electron affinity, which is 790, ticking it off as I go along. The next thing I'm going to subtract is the uh, first electron affinity. And so that's going to be minus minus 141. And then I'm going to subtract, right, in the next case, because I'm going against the arrow still over here, two lots of the first ionization energy. And then I'm going to subtract the atomization 
of oxygen because we've got that next as well and we're going against the arrow itself so in that case minus 249 and then we're going to subtract because again we're going against the arrow the atomization of potassium now but we've got two lots being atomized so it's gonna be two times by 89 itself and then right we're going to add because we're going along the arrow in this case a value for the uh, enthalpy change of formation so in that case that is going to have a value of minus 363 itself i am kind of running out of space here so i might just move that all to the left along with this little circle here and uh, if we were to put that in our calculator what we actually end up with as a value is minus two two and then seven seven and that's going to be in kilojoules per mole itself and in this type of question you would get roughly about four or five marks maybe